The last stop on our trip is here. The last stop for 7,861 Americans, 18 of whom were killed serving with the 2nd Chemical Mortar Battalion. Another 3,095 were commemorated, but their bodies were never recovered. Attack 5, William McNay died October 29, 1943. My father was standing next to him when he died. He was hit by an airburst, and my father said a fragment may have made a tiny hole in his neck, no bigger than a pencil point, and yet it paralyzed him and he couldn't breathe and he died in a few minutes. Private Irvin Covan, Private Johnny Coyne, and Private Frank DiCenzo were all killed by artillery September 11th, 1943 the day of the German counterattack that almost drove through to the water at the Salerno beachhead. Howard Brooks lies here from C Company. He and Luther Hacker and Richard Brooks were scheduled to go to Naples for arrest December the 20th, 1943. John Solon was telling them about good places to eat in Naples when a German air raid came in and killed the three of them in their bunker. John had run the other way and the others ran into the bunker. And John had to dig out their bodies. Private Paul Picard, February 10th, 1944, he took a message to the headquarters of the 143rd Infantry, was standing in the door of a stone house when a shell hit nearby and killed him. On February 6th, 1944, Tech 5, Joe Farley was riding in a Jeep with Captain Doug McConaughey. Shell fire came in on the road as they traveled and they bailed out of the Jeep. And a few minutes later, a shell killed Farley. The others in the group were unhurt. Sergeant Benjamin Harner, Private John Mazarek, and Private Cecil Five Ash were all killed at the foot of Monte Rotondo on November 11, 1943. Private Marvin Gray and Private Leonard Sanabed, as killed in that same mine explosion, were removed and buried at the request of their families in the United States. Private Joe Brusilleri was the first man killed in D Company. August 16, 1943, Joe heard the shell as it came in and he ran for cover in a culvert under a road where he should have been perfectly safe, but the shell hit exactly at the end of the culvert. Art Hall recalled Joe as a nice guy and remembered that the next day people showed him where the shell struck at the mouth of the culvert. This is where Archie Pugh is buried. He died near Fragnito Monforte October 10th, 1943. And my father has several pictures of him that were taken just before he was killed. I've never been able to locate his family. I know that he was entered in the registry of deceased veterans by his sister-in-law, Mrs. Mabel Pugh. And they tell me here that he was from Decatur, Georgia. Before that, I only knew that he was from somewhere in the Atlanta area. In this hall are inscribed the names of 3,075 Americans whose bodies were never recovered. As I look over the walls and all those names, I remember that my father wrote that in war, it's not long before you realize that the body doesn't matter much anymore after the person is gone. He said none of those people or these people know or care where or whether they're buried after they're gone. And that's a reminder that this place and the expense that the U.S. government goes to to keep it well maintained, not really for the people who are buried here, it's for us.